Um, so without further ado, Russell. Thank you, Mr. Um, I was a, uh, I too was a last minute uh, invitee, although I was invited last week. So <laughs> members of the prior panel trumped me in their, in, in their recency. Um, I was accused this morning by one of your local papers of um, uh, being, a, being against, uh, being in favor of closing the commission, uh, which actually is accurate. I was also accused of being um, one of the Bush conservative appointees. Um, in large part, I recommended closing the commission when I testified before Congress in 2005 because the conservatives had taken control of the commission. And in doing that, failed to put in what I considered were essential reforms for governance for how the organization managed itself. Um, my feelings have, have remained the same with the exception of some of what I've heard today caused me to pause a little bit. Because one of the things that uh, I think the commission has not done is maintained its relevance. Commissioner Gale spoke about the um, essential work done by the commission in its early days. I don't think one can say that about the work the commission has done in, the, in its more recent decades. Useful, perhaps, but I would say not essential. Any, any organization that doesn't renew and refresh itself um, is likely to continue to do what used to work and produce ma rather meager results. Um, b before I go any further, though, I wanted to first acknowledge uh, Commissioner Abby Thernstrom. She's not here today. She's a friend of mine, and I'm sorry that she's not here. I think she would have added a lot. Uh, she, as I was, has been frustrated by some of the processes by which the commission manages itself. Um, the bit of my background that is, is important is uh, I, I'm not an expert on civil rights. I learned mostly on the job. I um, was on the commission 15 years. I'm an economist by training, an investor by, by profession, uh, and a designer of business organizations. And in the organization design business, the most important thing are the three P's that we talk about, pro uh, purpose, process, and people. And no organization can design the right processes and people until it first has a shared and unifying purpose. Then an organization that gets the, the three P's right can, do, can achieve remarkable results. I think the commission has worked itself out of, out of a job uh, and part of the commission's early jobs have been taken over by, by uh, other government institutions. So unless the commission finds a, a, a new project for itself, I believe it has marginalized. Now I have some recommendations for projects the commission may want to take on. It may be, in fact, uniquely qualified to do some of these. Um, the first one, I, I would say, you know, in 1963, when Dr. King gave his talk, I didn't, I didn't pay any attention to it. I was 17 years old, newly blind. I'd lost half my fingers. I was on welfare and headed off to college. But over the years, I've listened to the King speech many times, but I've never been more moved by it than I was when I listened to it this last time and realized that part of his dream has been fulfilled by my children and grandchildren. Far more than my generation, 
their generations have come to regard their friends and judge their friends not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Uh, my youngest son, when he was in high school years ago, came home with some friends after school, and after they left, I said to him, Jamie, why didn't you tell me that your friend John was black? And Jamie was just stunned. He didn't know how to answer that. And he said, Dad, what, what would that matter? It, it, you know, race doesn't show up for, these, for my kid's generation uh, in the same way that it has for mine. It often doesn't, it often doesn't show up for me, but that's because I'm blind. Um, so I, I think someone needs to, and the commission could undertake this, someone needs to convene and sponsor a national conversation, not on race, but on civil rights, not just up a level from race, so not, this, not the protections granted to, to members of, of a particular race or class, but the civil rights that are, that are inalienable that we owe to all of us, that are, that are covered in that promissory note that Dr. King said the architects of the Constitution granted to all Americans. That, I think, would be a valuable national conversation if it were a place where people could, or a set, or a set of places where people could express well-meaning differences of opinions without being called racist. Uh, so often our, our dialogue is impeded because those of us that aren't black are accused of being racist if we criticize some of the social pathology of the African community. And as an economist, you can't, I cannot be so moved by the problems of poverty but also, I know that the problem of poverty is not an absence of money. It's an absence of, of practices that produce money. And dribbling money there doesn't change things. Going back to some of our earlier panels today, I wanted to say people are stepping around the issue. The federal government has destroyed the black family by forbidding welfare recipients to marry the fathers of their children and forbidding them to work. Thank you. And the illegitimate rate in the black family is shocking. But the white community didn't start to worry about illegitimacy until the white rate started to rise. And now we're all very worried about it. And I'm not you know, going to argue, I don't have a basis to argue that that's a cause or a symptom, but it, it destroys the, the basis of which progress happens, which is work, save, go to school, and invest. It makes it very hard to accomplish the traditional way to go from welfare to, um, to wealth, as I have done. And I like being rich. I like it so much, I like everyone to have a chance for it. But if you don't go to school, you don't. And um, so, so another project the commission could undertake, I'll wrap this up, commissioner, um, is to celebrate the enormous progress that we've made. Uh, to celebrate the achievements. This is a nation of heroes. We have heroes. We have many people who have achieved great things. We run the risk of becoming victims. And the rate of return I discovered a long, long time ago for being a victim is positive, but it's very low. And that's why I got off welfare at the earliest possible moment and went on to build wealth. And I encourage everyone to be as, as prosperous as they can. Thank you.